As we look to our prophets, Prophet Abraham is the founder and the patriarch of the Abrahamic faiths, and with it, Ahl Kitab, or people of the book. From there, Moses brought the Torah and Judaism, and then Jesus brought the Bible and Christianity. God's message culminated through Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, with the Holy Quran. As we look to their, their examples, the process through which God's message was transmitted, it becomes strikingly clear that success is not achieved overnight or even the lifetime of just one prophet. In each case, their journey was one that was the start of the process. Their struggle did not end with their passing. Among the countless lessons that can be learned from their lives is that the struggle is not limited to one year, one lifetime, or even a generation. It is one that will carry through Akira with successes along the way. We strive for success knowing every day won't be rewarded tomorrow, but we do knowing that our work yesterday will be rewarded as we continue along the struggle. As COVID has disrupted the nature of our work in advocacy and the operations of our internal organization with the government, we were not immune. The impact policy team adjusted to this new normal to continue the work of this multi-generational marathon in unprecedented times. This year alone, we saw the waves and ripples of political polarization, insurrection, and a reframe of how we view ourselves and the rest of the world in uncertain times that impact our community here and abroad, specifically around religious freedom, surveillance, in unlawful incarceration, and double standards in prosecution. We saw the same thing when it came to our report on the double standards in the way the Department of Homeland Security targets prosecuting Muslims versus non-Muslims. As American Muslims, we must recognize when we are being discriminated against, unfairly targeted because of our faith and ethnicity. But simply recognizing does nothing. We identified a clear pattern of discrimination and decided that a press release or a few meetings were not enough. As a result of our detailed report, senior members of the House and Senate Homeland Security Committee sought our counsel on how to improve policies to ensure American Muslims are not being targeted, but also making sure that we are keeping our country safe. It was critical for a report of this gravity to be widely read. And to that end, we worked with Senate leadership to hold a press conference in the United States Capitol to share our critical insight with members of Congress and their staff. We know it was well received and inspired reaction and action because the questions we were being asked after our presentation, but also because of the advice that was sought from us as key committee members deliberated their next steps. Again, as a result of our efforts on Afghanistan, members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee reached out to MPAC as they were attempting to draft legislation. The crux of our work was and continues to be to amplify and not occupy and to ensure that we end the status quo of endless wars. In our community around the country, we have Afghan Americans who have been working to better the lives of their friends and family in their home country. This insight has never been more critical than it is right now. For that reason, we have been hosting a series of panels discussing and highlighting them, asking what they believe to be the best next steps. The common theme in all of these disparate issues is that the administration in Capitol Hill trusts MPAC to be the voice of American Muslims. When they are making decisions that will impact our community, MPAC has a seat at the table. We seek not to occupy the narrative, instead to amplify our community's collective voice. Without your support, none of what we have accomplished this year would have been possible. And it is through your support that we draw inspiration, knowing that we are fighting for our entire community of American Muslims. For us and for now, that will not stop until we close Guantanamo Bay and turn it into a museum, just like the one memorializing the Japanese internment camp at Manazar.